Okay, so you ready to uh, dive in on this one? You sent us a whole bunch of stuff about plasma science. Yeah, a real mix. Yeah, we got like academic papers and news articles and even some presentation slides. So looks like you're really looking for the full picture on this one. Yeah, and I think what's really interesting is that you're not just interested in what plasma IS, but also like what it can do. Exactly. You know, like how it could be used to like mm -hmm. change things. Yeah, for energy or tech or space travel even. It's a big topic. It is. So uh, think of this as our deep dive into plasma science. And we're not just going to like, you know, give you a basic definition or anything. No, you're going deeper. Yeah. We're going to get into like why you should actually care about this like so-called fourth state of matter. Right. Because you know what most people don't realize is that plasma is like everywhere. Wait, really? I thought it was mostly solids, liquids and gases. Well, yeah, here on Earth. Sure. Right. But like if you zoom out, you know, to the universe, like stars and nebulae and even the space between galaxies, it's pretty much all plasma. Wow. We're talking like 99.9% .9 of the visible universe. So Earth is like the weird one. Pretty much. Huh. Okay, so I get that it's a big deal out there in space. Right. But what about down here, you know, but besides like lightning, how does plasma show up in like everyday life? Well, I mean, think about the screen you're looking at right now or like the lights in your house. Oh, yeah. Plasma is used in like flat screen TVs and fluorescent lights and even some like industrial processes. Huh. So it's already more common than I realized. Yeah, it really is. So speaking of the future, you sent over this National Academy's report called uh, Plasma Science Enabling Technology, Sustainability, Security and Exploration. And it seems like they're making some pretty big claims. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a lot to get through. But the, the main thing is like how useful they think plasma science could be. Right. Like they're not just talking about making things a little bit better. No, it's like they think it could completely change entire industries. For example, they talk about like creating these crazy intense plasmas with lasers, oh. like pushing the boundaries of high energy density physics. And there's even this picture of something called the Z machine that looks kind of like a weapon from a science fiction movie. Well, it's not quite a weapon, but yeah, it's definitely high tech. And by studying matter under those kinds of extreme conditions. Yeah we can learn a lot about like the fundamental laws of the universe. Okay, that's cool, but let's be real. How does all this like high-powered laser stuff actually benefit normal people, you know, people who aren't physicists? Well, one big area is clean energy. Okay. Specifically fusion power, which is often called like the holy grail of energy because it's based on the same process that powers the sun. Right, so it's like replicating the sun here on earth. Exactly. And it relies entirely on our ability to control plasma. Ah, uh, because with fusion, you're trying to fuse atomic nuclei, which requires like crazy high temperatures and pressures. And the only way to contain that kind of reaction yeah. is with super strong magnetic fields that can shape and control the plasma. And that's what places like MIT's Plasma Science and Fusion Center and the Princeton Plasma Physics Laboratory are working on. But fusion has always seemed like it's like just out of reach, you know, like it's always just around the corner. Yeah. So is there anything different this time? Like, is there something in this research that suggests we're actually close to a breakthrough? You know, I think there is a real sense of momentum now, especially after that NIF experiment that achieved ignition. Right. That wasn't just hype. It was a legitimate scientific milestone. OK. I mean, I'm not saying we'll have commercially viable fusion power plants tomorrow. No, no. But it proves that the theory actually works. Yeah. And now it's about figuring out the engineering challenges. Which are huge. Huge. But the payoff could be even bigger. Yeah. Like a clean and limitless energy source. That's pretty good reason to care about plasma. For sure. Now, you also sent over some really interesting papers about plasma propulsion. Oh, yes. Specifically, something called compact toroid propulsion that's being developed by a company called Ad Astra Rocket Company. Right. And it sounds almost too futuristic to be real. Well, it's definitely cutting edge. Yeah. The idea is that instead of using chemical rockets, yeah. you could use this superheated electrically charged gas, which is plasma, to propel a spacecraft. Okay. And because plasma can reach much higher speeds than the exhaust from a chemical rocket, yeah. it could be way more efficient. Wow. And that means we could travel much faster. Okay. So I'm just going to be honest. The first thing that pops into my mind is like getting to Mars faster. Oh, uh, sure. Is that like actually realistic or am I just thinking about science fiction? Mars is definitely on the table. But the really exciting part is that it could allow us to go even further than Mars. Wow. Like to the outer planets and maybe even beyond. Wow. It could open up the whole solar system to us in a way that just isn't possible with conventional rockets. 
So this Ad Astra company with their Vasim engine, are they like the leaders in this field? Yeah, they're definitely one of the key players mm -hmm. and they're tackling one of the biggest challenges, which is variable thrust. Yep. It means being able to adjust the engine's output which is crucial for maneuvering in deep space. Makes sense. So it's not just about going faster. Yeah. It's about having more control. So it's not just faster. It's like more maneuverable. Exactly. Huh. That opens up a lot of possibilities. But before we get too carried away with dreams of interplanetary travel, right. this report also mentions some pretty big challenges facing the field of plasma science. Oh, yeah. There are definitely some hurdles. Like what? Well, one of the most pressing issues is the lack of diversity in the workforce. Ah, okay. The statistics are really stark, and it's not just about fairness. It's about limiting the potential for innovation. That's true. You know, we need more people from different backgrounds with different perspectives if we want to solve the really tough problems. Yeah, that makes sense. And even with the best minds working together these large-scale projects like fusion research, yep. they need a lot of money. Absolutely. So how do we make sure that the funding keeps flowing to support this kind of research? Well, I think a big part of it is public awareness. You know, sure. we need to help people understand that plasma science isn't just some esoteric field. Yeah. It's about solving real world problems. Yeah. Like clean energy and advanced materials, even breakthroughs in medicine. And speaking of medicine, we've barely even mentioned plasma's potential in healthcare. Right. There's a lot to talk about there. Yeah, from wound healing to cancer treatment, there mm -hmm. are all sorts of possibilities. It's a whole other area where plasma could really make a difference. Sounds like we've got a lot more to unpack here. We do. So let's dive into some of these specific applications in more detail after a quick break. This is good. Okay, so we've talked about how plasma science is way more than just cool lightning bolts. Right. Like, it could actually help us solve some of humanity's biggest problems. Absolutely. Like our reliance on fossil fuels. Yeah, exactly. Which brings us back to fusion power. The holy grail. The holy grail of energy sources. Yeah. Yeah, the idea of like harnessing the power of the sun. <laughs> it's a pretty amazing goal. Yeah, it is. But before we get too deep into it, can we just like back up for a second and explain what fusion actually is? Sure. Because I think a lot of people get it confused with fission. Yeah, it's not always explained very well. Right. Basically, fusion is about combining lighter atomic nuclei to make heavier ones. Okay. And when that happens, a huge amount of energy is released. So it's not splitting atoms, it's like sticking them together. Exactly. And the best part is that the fuel for fusion is isotopes of hydrogen, uh -huh. which are super abundant in seawater. Wow. So basically we're talking about a, a potentially limitless clean energy source. Okay, that's the dream. But what are like the biggest challenges? Because this isn't a new idea. No, it's not. People have been talking about fusion for Decade. Right. The engineering challenges are huge. <sighs> At first, you need to create temperatures hotter than the core of the sun. Wow. Just to overcome the electrostatic repulsion between the positively charged nuclei. Right. And then you have to confine that superheated plasma, which is basically like trying to hold lightning in a bottle. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. And it has to be stable enough to sustain a reaction that actually produces more energy than it consumes. Right, so you're not just putting in more energy than you're getting out. Exactly. That's what's called ignition. Right. You mentioned the NIF experiment that achieved ignition. Yeah. But didn't they use way more energy to trigger the reaction than they actually got out of it? W yes, but that experiment was about proving that ignition was possible. I see. For years, people said it couldn't be done, but the NIF experiment proved them wrong. Okay. So now the focus is on scaling up the technology improving efficiency, and making the whole process commercially viable. So it's like, we have the science now, we need the engineering. Exactly. So what are like the main approaches people are exploring right now? There are two main paths. One is magnetic confinement fusion, which uses powerful magnets to control the plasma. Okay. That's what they're doing at MIT and Princeton. Right. And then there's inertial confinement fusion, which uses high-powered lasers to implode a tiny pellet of fuel. That's what NIF is doing. Okay. Each approach has its own advantages and disadvantages. So it's like a race to see who can figure it out first. Kinda. But ultimately, success in one approach could help the other. Ah, uh, okay. It's really a global effort with a lot of collaboration. That's good to hear. Okay, let's switch gears from power generation to something a little more... Uh space travel okay you sent over some research on plasma propulsion yeah specifically the vesemer engine being developed by ad astra rocket company right what makes this engine different from like the ion thrusters that nasa already uses well ion thrusters are great for certain things but they have limited thrusts okay 
The Vesemer engine, on the other hand, is designed for variable specific impulse. Hmm. I don't know what that means. It means it can adjust its thrust and efficiency. Yeah. So it's much more versatile for maneuvering in deep space. So it's not just about raw power. It's about control. Exactly. Okay. Think of it like this. An ion thruster is like a long, slow burn. Mm -hmm. It's good for gradually accelerating over huge distances. Right. But the Vesemer engine is more like a sports car. It can accelerate quickly, then cruise efficiently, mm -hmm. and then accelerate again when it needs to. Oh, okay. See. It's much more agile. So what are the challenges of developing an engine like this? It sounds pretty complicated. Well, it definitely is. One of the biggest challenges is heat management. Yeah, because it's plasma. Exactly. These engines operate at incredibly high temperatures, so you have to make sure the components don't melt. Right. That requires advanced materials and really sophisticated cooling systems. Makes sense. And then there's the issue of power generation. Yeah. You can't just plug it into the wall in space. Right. Uh -huh. You need a powerful and reliable power source, probably some kind of nuclear reactor. So it's not just about building the engine. It's about the whole system. Exactly. It's a huge undertaking. So where are they now with this Vasim engine? Like, are we close to actually seeing it fly? Well, Ad Astra has been doing ground tests for years, Okay. gradually increasing the engine's power and duration. They've proven that the concept works. But a space-based demonstration is still probably a few years away. Okay, so it's still early days. Yeah, but the potential benefits for space exploration are huge. Yeah, imagine getting to Mars in weeks instead of months. Exactly, or even going beyond Mars to the outer planets. Wow. That's the kind of transformative impact that plasma propulsion could have. Yeah, it's not just about travel time. It's about what we could do once we get there. Right. Like scientific research, resource exploration, maybe even colonizing other planets. It's pretty mind-blowing. It is. Okay, so we've got fusion power promising clean energy and plasma propulsion offering a faster and more efficient way to explore space. Yeah. What other surprises does plasma science have in store for us? Well, one area that's often overlooked is the potential of plasma in medicine. Plasma medicine? Yeah, it's a relatively new field, but the possibilities are amazing. Like what kind of things? Well, plasmas can create all sorts of reactive species. Okay. Like free radicals and charged particles that can interact with biological tissues in very specific ways. So how could that be used in medicine? Well, imagine a plasma device that can sterilize wounds without using harsh chemicals. Oh, wow. Or a plasma-based treatment that can target and destroy cancer cells without harming healthy tissue. That sounds incredible. It does, doesn't it? Like science fiction? I know, but it's real science. There are already plasma-based devices being used to treat chronic wounds and skin conditions. Wow. And research on plasma cancer therapies is moving very quickly. So this is like a really promising area. It is, but there are still challenges. Mm. You know, like any powerful tool, plasma needs to be handled carefully. Right. One of the challenges is controlling the dose mm -hmm. and making sure that the treatment is targeted and precise. Yeah. And there's still a lot we don't know about the long-term effects of plasma exposure on biological systems. So more research is needed? Absolutely. Yeah. But the early results are very promising. Okay. And I think plasma medicine has the potential to revolutionize healthcare in the coming decades. Wow. Okay, so we've talked about a lot of really positive applications of plasma science. We have. But I know there are also challenges and concerns that need to be addressed. Oh, for sure. Can we talk about those a bit more? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we've already mentioned the lack of diversity in the workforce and the, the need for more funding. Right. But there are also environmental concerns to think about. Like what? Well, some industrial processes that use plasma generate byproducts that could be harmful uh -huh. if they're not handled and disposed of properly. Right. And then there's the issue of nuclear waste if we ever do develop fusion power. Ah, uh, yeah, that's a big one. So it's really about responsible innovation, making sure that the benefits of plasma science outweigh any potential risks. Right. So it's about using this technology wisely. Exactly. We need to proceed with caution and foresight and have open and honest conversations about the ethical implications of this work. That's a great point and a topic for a whole other deep dive. Uh -huh. But I think for now, we've given our listener a pretty good overview of the amazing potential of plasma science. I think so. It's clear that this field could really shape the future in some really big ways. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So before we wrap up, I'm curious to hear your personal take on all of this. What are you most excited about when you think about the future of plasma science? Hmm. That's a good question. I think for me, the most exciting thing is the sheer breadth of possibilities. Yeah. It's like plasma science is a key that can unlock 
so many doors, yeah. new energy sources, new ways to travel, new medical treatments, new ways of understanding the universe. It's mind boggling. It really yeah. is. It's a field that's constantly pushing the boundaries of what we thought was possible. So what about the flip side? What are you most concerned about? My biggest worry is that we'll let fear and short sightedness get in the way of progress. Yeah. Fusion power, for example, is a long-term investment. Right. And it's going to require a lot of political will and public support to make it a reality. Yeah. I really hope we have the courage and vision to see it through. That's a great point. So for our listener who's been on this journey with us, what's the one thing you want them to take away from this deep dive? I would say this plasma science isn't just about abstract theories and laboratory experiments. Yeah. It's about solving real-world problems yeah. and creating a better future for everyone. I love that. It's a field that deserves our attention, our support, and our imagination. I couldn't have said it better myself. Thanks for joining me on this journey into the world of plasma science. It was my pleasure. And to our listener, thanks for sticking with us. Keep those research requests coming because... The more we learn, the more we realize how much there still is to discover. Wow, we've covered a lot of ground in this deep dive into plasma science. We have. From like the vastness of plasma in the universe. It's everywhere. I know, to its potential uses here on Earth for energy, space travel, and even medicine. Yeah, it's been quite a journey. It really has. And I think, you know, as with any exploration into like cutting edge science, uh -huh. we always end up facing challenges, you know? <laughs> ethical questions, and even some anxieties about the future. It comes with the territory. Yeah. So, for example, we talked earlier about the need for more diversity in the plasma science workforce right. to make sure we're tapping into all the best minds. And the report also highlights the issue of funding, you know? Yeah. These big ambitious projects like building a fusion reactor, they require a lot of long-term investment. Absolutely. So how do we convince, like, policymakers and the public that this research is actually worth the cost? Well, I think a big part of it is storytelling. Oh, interesting. You know, we need to move beyond the technical jargon and like really convey the excitement and the potential of plasma science. Right. Make it relatable. Exactly. We need to show the human side of science, you yeah. know, the passion, the dedication, the struggles, the triumphs. Totally. I think people connect with stories way more than they connect with data. Absolutely. So it's about showing how these like abstract research projects could actually lead to real benefits for people. Yeah. Like a cleaner planet or cheaper energy or cures for diseases or even becoming a multi-planetary species. It's about painting a picture of a better future. Exactly. And speaking of tangible benefits, you know, we talked about plasma medicine. Yeah, one of the most exciting areas. I know it's super promising, but it also raises some like pretty complex ethical questions. True. For example, if we develop plasma-based therapies that could like significantly extend human lifespans, uh -huh. what would that do to society? That's a big question, and there's no easy answer. Right. We need to have some really thoughtful conversations about these issues before these technologies become widely available. Yeah, it reminds me of the debates around genetic engineering and AI. Exactly. As we gain more and more control over life and intelligence, you know? Yeah. We need to be super careful about the potential consequences. Absolutely. And it's not just about the ethics of specific technologies. It's also about making sure that the benefits of plasma science are shared equitably. That's a really important point. You know, like if we develop fusion power, we need to make sure that clean energy isn't just accessible to rich countries or corporations. Right. Everyone should benefit. Exactly. It's about using these powerful tools to create a more just and sustainable world for everyone. Well said. So for our listener who's been with us on this deep dive... What's the one message you want them to take away? I would say stay curious, stay informed, and stay engaged. I love that. Plasma science is a rapidly evolving field, and the decisions we make today will have a huge impact on the future. It's a call to action. It is. You know, a reminder that science isn't just something that happens in labs. It affects all of us. It really does. And the more we understand about science, the better equipped we are to shape the future we want. I completely agree. This has been a truly fascinating deep dive, and I'm so grateful for your expertise. It was my pleasure. And to our listener, thanks for joining us. Keep those research requests coming, because the more we learn, the more we realize there's still so much more to discover. 